Mayor Weaver, yes. nice to have you here with us. And I want to welcome everybody on Bloomberg Radio who are joining us uh, in this uh, conversation, joining us live on Bloomberg Radio. So let's set the scene. OK. I'm going to go back to 2014. A state-appointed emergency manager in Flint made a cost-saving switch in Flint's drinking water source. We all know the story. It was a national story. Led to discoloration, led to lead poisoning in children, a deadly outbreak of Legionnaire's disease. People have died from this. Yes. Others will be impacted for the rest of their lives as a result of their exposure. Officials were aware of this problem about a year and a half before they told people, even though the Flint residents were saying, my we water's knew. brown, there's something wrong here. This is something that you expect in a third world country, not necessarily here in the United States. State of emergency declared in 2016. Michigan officials have been charged as a result of this. The crisis led to your campaign in your 2015 election. You beat the incumbent mayor at the time. You're a psychologist. Yes. <laughs> a political novice. Why'd you do this? Why did you run? Well, you know, it, it was not my plan to run originally. I actually volunteered on someone's campaign about five years ago. And um, I got involved in what was going on. And you know, if you're a mental health professional, you're in the helping profession anyway. Right. And so when I saw what was happening in my hometown, I just wanted to help and be involved. And at that time, the emergency manager stepped in, but I stayed involved. And people kept saying, you need to run for mayor. You need to run for mayor. And um, why did you think you could do something different in a city that has been plagued with problems well, for Well, you know years? what, and that's what people ask me. You know, now that you mention that. And was said, in the middle of a crisis. You, it, but you know what, when the crisis first started, our crisis was the cost of water. Uh, when I started campaigning originally, we were paying eight times the national average for water. And so that's what we were angry and outraged about. Right. And then the switch took place. And uh, because I started campaigning at the beginning of the year, and the switch took place in April, and then we found out not only did it cost a lot, but something was wrong with the water. And I remember talking with a lot of people and, you know, getting advice from people, people that I trusted and whose input and, you know, just mentors of mine and uh, my family, asking them, do you really think I can make a difference? And they said, yeah, we do. We do. And I said, well, let's do it. Now, it didn't happen that quickly because my husband said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> We've he heard said, that no from spouses. Of, of <laughs> Tell me about those first few days, though, once you get into office Ooh. and you're smack in the middle of this crisis and having right. to deal with it. And people who are in situations where they're maybe getting bottled water or getting the water they need, schools mm. being affected, children We weren't being getting affected. anything yet. You weren't getting We it. weren't That's getting right. anything yet. Uh, because you hadn't declared a state. I didn't declare it. I got in in November of 2015, and I did an emergency declaration in December. And then right after the new year, the, it went through the county and to the governor. And things were set in motion then. But it was interesting because after the election, I was in office five days later. Right. And I was in a meeting with all of these people. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure out who are all of these people. Did you trust people. the people considering what had no, happened? No, no, because I went into office. And because we were still under state, uh, you know, the emergency manager was still in place. I didn't have any power. Right. I didn't have any power. So I could not appoint people. So usually a mayor, a mayor comes in right. and they bring their team and they appoint their chief of police and their fire chief and their chief legal and on and on and on. And I was not allowed to do that. So you couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything. I had to work with who was there, and that was very difficult. I want to ask you why this happened, and I want to put these questions to our audience. So pull out. I'd love to do some polling, okay. and then I want to get your thoughts on this. Okay. Um, the, the first question, do you think the water crisis would have happened in a wealthy U.S. suburb? Yes? No? Maybe? Don't know? And we'll wait for some of these to come in and see. I'm just curious what we mm -hmm. see. No. Do you agree with that? I agree. I agree because we had been crying out for 18 months. Like you said, we knew everyone You're knows. You're paying more for money. We're water paying initially. more, and then the water's brown. It doesn't take a scientist to know brown water is bad. We'd known it for 18 months. And uh, people were crying out. There were protests almost every week about the water. And people were ha holding bags of hair and, and 
rashes all over, and then the medical community spoke up and said they had been testing the infants coming in through the hospital and noticed that the blood lead levels had uh, doubled, tripled, and quadrupled in the infants. I have another question, and we'll pull this into the conversation. Outgoing Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, I want to poll you guys, <laughs> should have resigned, should go to jail, can't be held accountable, hard to say. Yeah. You have worked with the governor. Yes. You've also said race and class were factors in authority's slow response to Flint's water crisis. You've been critical of him. Yes. What do you think? But I had to, but I, but I had to work with him. Uh, and one of the things I've always said is we wanted everybody to be held accountable because, and, and I kind of stayed out of it. I said, I'm going to let the law, you know, do its thing and take place. But and we for, wanted for everyone. And for folks on radio, the, the majority of our audience are saying should, should have, have resigned. resigned. Okay. So forgive well, me. Well, he wasn't going to do that. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, there I was. But he liked the emergency manage managers. Oh, yes. Yes. Signed into law. Signed that in, put these folks into place. Yeah, he liked the emergency managers. He liked them. And so, it, you know, it was funny because I kind of had to, I don't know if, if I tricked him, uh, but I remember I said, I need some power. And I remember I, I met with him one day, and this was shortly after I'd gotten into office. And I said, you know what, Governor? I said, under the appointments you've made, I said, our homicide rate has gone up 71%. I said, but hey, if you're good, I'm good. I'll just tell the people you're happy with that. I said, you know, <laughs> I did. And what I said, did he say? He sat there and I said, and that fire chief you put in there, I said, you know, he got rid of that aerial ladder so when that dorm at U of M Flint catches on fire and we have to wait for someone else to come, if you're good, I'm good. I'll just tell everybody you're okay. And, and he said, you can appoint your chief of police and your fire chief. And that was how things started. But I had to figure out a way to work with him because he had what we needed and what we deserved as a result of what happened. Meaning what? That he could access as funds quickly or what? Well, they had the funds. He yeah. had the funds. And, um, you know, even, even that, I remember when I said, I'm going to declare an emergency. And people said, uh, of course, they were the governor's people. Right. But uh, they said, you're doing everything the wrong way and you're going to make the governor mad. And I said, we're mad at the governor. And if I'm doing everything the wrong way, it got you all to the table. So I guess I better keep doing it this way. And they said, well, all you'll get is $5 million. I said, well, right now we have zero. I'll take it. Right. And it turned into hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, but I don't think they were expecting to be challenged that way. Well, it's interesting because, you know, his administration discounted studies, wasn't mm -hmm. proactive to fix things. He waited to ask for federal money. I mean, was mm -hmm. it a true tra tragedy? I mean, forgive yes. me, this is going to sound so simplistic. Mm -hmm. Mistakes, terrible mistakes do happen. Right. Or was it a political story? You know what? Mistakes happen, but when people are holding up jugs of brown water, you need to, you, you need to do something about it. Right. And that's what, you know, I knew I was there to protect and serve. And I remember people said, you don't have any power. What can you do? And one of the things I said is I can open my mouth and I can let you know what's happening. And um, I can tell you they're doing this and here's the direction I think we should go. But they won't let me. I told them, I said, I'll be in front of the media every single day. I said, and maybe they won't let me do things, but I sure will let you know what's going on and we're going to keep crying out. Media can actually do good. And, and that's what happened. And I, I don't mean to be so, but it, media right. is being beaten up in right. this industry right now. Mm -hmm. We're all trying to figure out what's real, what's not. Mm -hmm. But in this case, really opened up and revealed what was going on. Yes. And told the story. I'm going to let I'm going to move on in a second. Okay. 60% said he should have resigned. Mm -hmm. Does he still need to be held accountable? And yes. I don't know what that means. Everybody, Does, do charges need to be filed it, against we him? We said what happened in Flint was criminal. When you have kids that have been poisoned and actually a whole community, but we know that kids under the age of six and pregnant and nursing mothers are going to be impacted, some of them for the rest of their lives. When you have had people that have died as a result of legionnaires, what they're looking at now are the, the high cases of, of miscarriages and stillbirths that took place during right. that time. One of the other things they're looking at now, and I'm talking about the medical community, are uh, some of the numbers of deaths that were uh, attributed to pneumonia, and they're wondering if that was really uh, legionnaires and what was going on there. And, and when you look at the mental health implications, you know, it's, I, I was talking with somebody earlier, and I was saying it's really easy to put a cost on infrastructure right. and what we need that way. Right. I said, but when you look at the human cost, the human factor, we don't know what that's going to be. And some of it, we're going to have to wait and see what happens. But is it a reminder that our society puts values on people differently? And Yes, and, and, and what happened in, in the city 
city of Flint. And, and um, you know, even though there were other cities in the state of Michigan that were taken over by emergency managers, right. they put cost over the public health and well-being of the people because it could have cost something as small as $100 a day for corrosion control, and this would not have happened. Right, short-sighted. Right. So one last question. What's that? Should he be gone after you and know, charged? We want, yes. And that's what we said for every level of government. Uh, from the bottom to the top, top to the bottom. We want everybody held accountable for what happened in Flint. And if that means the governor, it means the governor as well. Do we feel like we now know exactly what happened, that that one individual, do we, do we, are all the pieces in place? Or is you know there what, still I don't know, no, there, there's still some unknowns and, and it's interesting and we're looking forward to. Because we don't want another to, Flint to happen. No, we don't. And, I, and I, I hope people are paying attention to what happened in Flint because one of the things I've said is don't let us go through a crisis and you don't learn from us. Right. Uh, this should never happen again. It shouldn't have happened from the beginning. Beginning. It really should not have. So where are we today? And I know we've talked about you're fixing 18,000 pipes. I think you're almost there. We're almost there. We had three years in which to fix these pipes, and we said we'd do 6,000 a year over three years. So I we have until the end of next year to get this accomplished. But you're ahead of schedule. We're ahead of schedule, and we have less than 150 to go. Is that then the problem's fixed? Not quite, yeah. but we're on the right track. <laughs> well, what else um, needs to be done? You know, because one of the things we've talked about is after those are fixed, um, you know, right now we're still on bottled and filtered water, but the reason we're on the bottled and filtered water is because with the amount of construction going on in the city, the EPA has said you still have a public health risk until you get all of those uh, pipes removed and replaced. So we're ahead of schedule for that to happen. But one of the other things that happened in Flint was just like the pipes were damaged, some of the people's in-home plumbing and fixtures were damaged. So when someone's home tests high for lead, it's because of the fixtures in the home and the plumbing in the home. Who pays for that? Like I know. That, yeah, that's a good question. In my house, if it's in my house, <laughs> I'm paying for it. Exactly. And we said that we should not because it was as a result of the switch of the water. And so while the state came So the through, pipes were ruined as a result. Yes. So they they Included. gave some money in that first year, but they only gave enough for about four thousand fixtures. Well we know that's nowhere near enough. How many do how many need to be fixed? Wow, you know, and, and that's what 100, we're trying to well, we don't. It, oh, the population you're, you're, is under. Is under is, right. it, that's the population. But when you're looking at the number of homes, and that's what we're looking at now, and that's why we need people to continue to test the water, and we need to go into the homes and check and see what kinds of fixtures. But do you they have, have any idea on how many? No, I don't have an idea on how many. Now I could get that information. That's something that when yeah. the contractors go in, they kind of check that information. But we know. Uh, when we looked at the cost, it was probably going to, to change all of those in the city, it was going to be about another $10 million that we needed. Wow. What guarantees do you feel like you can give your citizens that once this is all done, that it won't happen again? How do, you, how do we ensure that that doesn't happen again? You know what, and that's one of the things that we've talked about is looking at changing the standards that are in place. One of the things, we should be able to take water quality standards for granted, but we can't. Right. We can't, and, and the standards that are in place are old and outdated, and they need to be looked at and uh, raised. So we've been working on that in the state of Michigan. Uh, but the other thing is, we've, I've told them, I said, I'm not signing off on this. I haven't told anybody to drink water from the tap, and I'm not going to until we get all of those lines replaced, until we look at, and, and even though those have been identified, we want to go and check the other ones. We want to make sure if we're going to do it right, let's do it right. If we're going to get the lead and galvanized lines out, let's do them. And so we're going to check those, but then we have to have the medical community sign off, and uh, mm -hmm. that's when the all clear will be. Uh, because I'm not going to tell anybody, because that's what was told to us was to drink up. And right. so we're continuing to monitor and test the water in the city of Flint. Uh, but one of the good signs, and I think people are, are recognizing that we've made a lot of progress, you know, because building back trust was such a difficult thing Huge. when it's been broken on all levels. Um, and uh, when GM came back on the water, because right. you know that was right. one that of was the things that, that was a big deal. So right. GM coming back to the water, Lear Corporation coming and building a factory, Android coming there. Before we get to that, mm -hmm. I want to ask you about Elon Musk. Yes. Elon Musk is apparently never sleeping, and he is everywhere <laughs> because he helped Flint. He donated money to install new water fountains with filtration systems at all of your schools. Yes, because that was one of the other issues. You know, it's it's interesting and it's scary Did he that call you? We tweeted. Well, of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> we that tweeted. Is, okay, this is my favorite moment of the day. Because of course he tweeted. 
So he tweeted, hey, hey, Mayor, I can give you filtration no, systems? No, he tweeted that he wanted to look at doing something in the city of Flint, so I tweeted back. Good for you. <laughs> said, we want you to do something in the city of Flint. And he did it. And he did. But, Quickly. but the state can leave. They don't have to test the water in the schools. There is, they're under no legal obligation or responsibility to test the schools, the daycares, none of that. And so we insisted that they test our schools before they before they waltzed out. And hmm. we were having issues with our schools. And I said, how are you going to leave? How can you leave? How can you stop bottled water when our schools are still testing high? And so they wanted to do a one-and-done test. And we said, no, we'd like a series of tests. Who's and they? The, uh, the state and uh, MDEQ, Michigan Department. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. You know, uh, the people that are in control of the water and making sure right. everything is the way I'm it's just supposed saying, to be. How could they not? It, they didn't have to legally, is what they said. I said, but this is a moral and ethical issue, wow. and you and you should want to do that. From Elon Musk, mm -hmm. what has that? And I know you're working on bringing companies in and partnerships, right. but what has that said about you know this type of outside help and what kind of different? You know, I don't know. Did Elon Musk that that, that little incident? say, okay, wait a minute, there's more outside help that maybe we can bring into Flint. Yes, and you know, it was interesting because at first he had talked about putting filters in people's homes, and we said that wasn't really what we needed to have happen. Right. Uh, we want to, uh, we, we're, we're doing that, uh, but we need help. Our schools are in trouble. And while our colleges and universities have the financial uh, ability to get filtration systems in, right. the community schools, the public schools did not have that financial ability to do that. And so we talked about a lot of things, and one of the things he did say was he wanted to make a meaningful difference, and we said that would make a meaningful difference. I want to talk about making a meaningful difference in Flint. I can't believe we only have a minute and a half left. Okay. Oh, my God. Um, USA Today just out with a list of 28 cities that haven't come back since the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. Top of the list uh -huh. was Flint. They need to come to Flint. <laughs> <laughs> but wait. Um, in, um, employment's down nearly 32% from 2007 to 2017. Hang on, mm -hmm. hang on. Flint's murder rate consistently among the country's worst. 42% of the just under 100,000 residents live in poverty. Mm -hmm. I know Lear did a plant. I know yes. Huntington Bank has come in. Yes. How do we change the Flint story that has been the Flint story well, for so long? You know what? And, and some of the information I'm just going to have to say is not accurate. Which one? Uh, Quite a bit because one of the, we've always been in the top ten for for most violent cities for arsons those kinds of things and we're not there anymore and that's something that's new for us and we're really excited about that yeah. uh, and and a lot of people don't know that because we've been there for such a long time but that's something that's new under the leadership that we have in those two chiefs and that's a really good thing one of the things we wanted to make sure was. Uh, I knew that with a crisis, economic opportunity comes. And so we wanted to make sure that the people of the city of Flint really benefited from that, that opportunity. So you I know, love what you did here. Well, because they said they were so scared that a big company would come in and you Take know, the, do the business. Exactly. The and so instead of putting out a bid for 18 to 20,000 lead service lines to be replaced, we broke it up into smaller bundles because I wanted local contractors to be able to get those jobs, and that was what we made sure happened. The first three contractors were from Flint and Genesee County, and they have hired uh, local contractors. And as we've continued to expand, we've gotten local contractors to get those jobs. But what is it? But, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If maybe my statistics, I did my research, mm -hmm. are not exactly, you know how do we get the story out there? How do you change and it? How do you make Amazon say, I want to come to I know, to and, they, and they should have. They, sh they should have, I mean, no offense, because you know what? Happy to have them here, but not really, because the transportation system's already right, maxed out. Right. they should have, and that's one of the things we've been letting people know, and that's why I think it was so important when Lear did come, when GM did get back on the are water, when Android. Are more going to come in, and how do you Yes, how, how yes you we are. We have to diversify. We don't have a choice, because in our heyday, GM employed 80,000 people. Right. In the city of Flint. Right. But now it was a one-industry city. It was a one-industry city. And so now if you look around, we have uh, University of Michigan Flint. We have Michigan State uh, College of Human Medicine there. We have Kettering University, which used to be General Motors Institute. We right. have Baker College of Business. And so we're really looking at how do we keep young people here in the city of Flint and what are the kinds of jobs uh, that are coming that the colleges and, uh, and, and, the, and the universities are saying, uh, how do we need to train people right. Graduate for here, these stay jobs. here, exactly. create companies. Exactly. One last question. What's that? Your term <laughs> comes up in November 2019? Yes. You're going to run again? <sighs> you could tell us. 
<laughs> Do you want to run again? Well, you know what? We put a lot of things in place that I would like to see uh, through. Yeah. I will say that. Uh, and we've made some uh, great progress, and we've done more than a lot of people ever thought we'd be able to get accomplished in such a short period of time. So I have some work I need to finish. Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> it's not anything. <laughs> Not to Wait answer. a minute. <laughs> Political psychologist turned politician. You're doing well. Thank you. Mayor Weaver, thank you so much. <laughs>